first of all, it's absolutely wonderful to be able to take part in the launch and event this evening. And it's wonderful to be able to hear from the different authors who've contributed to the second edition of the handbook. And on that note, enormous congratulations to you, Naren and Lee, Lillian and Gary, for the publication of the second edition. I have to say as well at this point that my co-author and co-presenter Luigi was meant to join us but he's been unable to make it unfortunately due to circumstances very much beyond his control sadly but we'll crack on nevertheless I have a small hope that Luigi might be able to join us as we continue but I'm not entirely sure if that'll be the case we'll crack on nevertheless and of course in continuing I'd very much like to uh, in the spirit of reconciliation, acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community, as well as pay my respects to elders past and present, and of course extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. The presentation and indeed the chapter are very much about large-scale events and their soft power dynamics, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. And at a glance, our chapter had, rather has, two arguments. The first is that large-scale event soft power is grounded in virtuosity. So in other words, it's grounded in the skill or the proficiency of the event organizers, which drive the soft power of the events, which in turn demonstrate this virtuosity and in demonstrating that virtuosity exert their attraction on others. The second argument is that despite the multiple barriers that have been created by the COVID-19 pandemic to participants and organizers to engage fully with the events, these sorts of large-scale events will continue to remain attractive and continue to be used as soft power resources because of their very spectacular nature and their appeal to and their function as entertainment. So in the presentation, I'll firstly briefly canvas the nature of the large scale events that we've been examining. Then I'll put forward a slightly more detailed set of points relating to soft power, virtuosity and large scale events. After that, I'll share with you the case study that we provided in the chapter, the case study being the Expo 2020 Dubai, which actually took place in the end in 2021 because of the pandemic. After that, canvas some of the issues connected to these large scale events and the ways in which soft power operates. And then finally, provide a brief conclusion. The large scale events on which the chapter focuses are the sorts of events that we see televised to millions and millions of people around the world, either every year or every couple of years. Uh, a scholar by the name of Paul Close has suggested that these really immense planned events with very extensive social reach have really grown or developed into their current proportion since the 1970s. And indeed, when we're thinking about these immense large scale events, we are thinking about events that reach audiences or participants, not just in the immediate vicinity of some sort of arena, for example, but also in homes and living rooms around the world. Another scholar by the name of Martin Muller has provided a really wonderful classification of large scale events, and he has divided the, the events into major, mega and giga events. The expos on which we've been focusing in the chapter are absolutely giga events but we have all sorts of major and mega and giga events that take place around us ranging from the olympic games to the apec summits for example so just to clarify we are looking at the very very enormous the largest of the large scale events if you like in terms of the way in which soft power operates in these events, we've argued that it's very much connected to virtuosity. And here we've drawn on Naren's ideas about virtuosity and the fact that magnificence or seemliness can excite admiration. And so in that respect, large scale events soft power is grounded 
in virtuosity in this demonstration of magnificence or seemliness that then excites admiration and of course i have to note that a fuller discussion of virtuosity and virtue is provided in uh, Naren's chapter in the first edition of the uh, soft power handbook and i have to thank Naren for that for that content really so when publics of different kinds are engaging in different ways with these large-scale events they're seeing this virtuosity this magnificence or this seemliness developed thanks to the craftsmanship if you like of the event organizers and that extraordinariness is the thing that excites their admiration is the thing that ultimately helps in the wielding or contributes to the wielding of soft power the expos and specifically the expo in Dubai are part of a very long-term heritage of universal exposition or world fairs in fact it's a 170 year heritage of these world fairs that have been taking place in many different parts of the world over time the scholarship about these world fairs has mainly come from the fields of history and cultural studies and scholars in those areas have examined these events in different ways but they haven't really connected the ways in which they're crafted and the ways in which they're run with soft power and so we hope that our chapter provides a useful contribution that extends beyond the fields of history and cultural studies of course we very much took into account in our research and in the chapter the fact that the expo was held during the pandemic in fact a once in a century pandemic and the pandemic of course significantly impacted the way in which expo was ultimately run on the most serious side of the spectrum the expo was pushed back a year and on the more minor or day-to-day -day side of the spectrum all sorts of things had to be implemented at expo like additional um, sanitization additional cleaning procedures additional security and so on all the sorts of things that we experienced in our own parts of the world day to day during the pandemic so that made the 2020 expo in dubai quite unique in that respect as well the collateral the communication collateral about the expo of course uh, didn't stop being produced just because of the pandemic and of course if anyone was on any for instance flights with any airlines that were promoting the expo you would have noticed of course the fact that the communication collateral continued to promote expo even though it had to be moved back a year so when we undertook the research and we, when we were looking for the elements of virtuosity that contributed to the, the operation of soft power through the events, we used the conventional qualitative content analysis developed approach developed by Xu Fang Xie and Sarah E. Shannon. And using that particular method, we analyzed all sorts of communication collateral focusing of course on online communication collateral and things like the official website of the 2020 Expo Dubai, the social media channels, the virtual version of the Expo and other related things to try to find the elements that to our mind demonstrated the virtuosity or the extraordinariness of the Expo and as a result the things that would excite people or bring about admiration in publics and we found quite a number of different things that we classified into four categories so the first of these were sub events of different kinds the staging of all sorts of little events during the expo and the richness of these little events had together a magnificence of their own so we had things like opening and closing ceremonies 
we had daily parades, there were concerts, and of course, little national events of different kinds within individual state pavilions at the expo. There was also the built environment, a range of different things that showcased the extraordinariness or the sophistication of the development of the expo and that helped to communicate uh, the, the magnificence of the entire occasion. So you had the enormous imposing buildings like the Al Wassel Dome, which we saw on the first slide of the presentation and which will be featured again on the final slide. There was also the sophisticated architecture developed not just by the expo organizers, but by the individual countries. Not all of the individual countries' pavilions were on the scale of the Al Wassel Dome. Many of the pavilions were much smaller, but nevertheless, the architecture was absolutely extraordinary and it contributed to this magnificence that participants saw and that was communicated through online uh, collateral of different kinds. And there was also the expo site itself and the way in which the whole thing was laid out to accommodate all sorts of different uh, actors. Then there was the organizational communication itself, which featured a range of different elements that helped to excite admiration. And there were all sorts of things like the very detailed efforts uh, to try to ensure participant satisfaction or to put it slightly differently, customer care. There was the aesthetic nature of the promotional material itself which was designed in very sophisticated ways. And finally, there was the, as I mentioned before, online version of the event, the virtual expo world, which can still be visited today, in fact. Finally, there was the human resources and the material resources as well. So there were, there were there was simply an army of people who helped to bring the virtual expo to life and who helped make sure that it ran smoothly uh, while it was in operation. So the enormous number of very talented people itself was something to behold. And then, of course, there were the very significant facilities and assets like the technology that was used, especially during the pandemic, to ensure people's safety, as well as the digital infrastructure that contributed to things, as I mentioned before, like the Virtual World Expo. The four of these different sets of elements we've mapped into this particular diagram here, which has virtuosity at its heart as the key thing that ultimately helps to animate the soft power being wielded through this sort of large scale event. And of course, these sorts of elements apply not just to Expo, but to other settings as well. So these can be very much extrapolated with differences for every large scale event, of course, to other events of a similar sort of size. Now, of course, there are all sorts of issues connected to these large scale events and the virtuosity that organizers hope to demonstrate through them, as well as the operation of the soft power uh, in and around the events. So first of all, virtuosity itself is one person or what one group sees to be magnificent or seemly or admirable won't necessarily be seen by others in the same way. So in that respect, there is absolutely really never any complete guarantee that the way in which a large scale event is developed will end up generating admiration, generating excitement, uh, will end up generating awe at the end of the day. Admittedly, different components like enormous never before seen buildings, for example, with sophisticated architecture, are possibly more likely to generate virtuosity, but even then there are no guarantees. When event organizers develop these sorts of very sophisticated, very large scale events, they, as we saw with the expo in Dubai, insist on very high standards and ensuring those high standards as a result brings about a certain element of rigidity in the sense that the workers, the organizers, the staff can't deviate from extremely high standards and from the expectations of the organizers. Within those expectations, in the case of Dubai, we have to, of course, note the 
expectations and requirements of the government authorities in the United Arab Emirates, but the high standards of the organizers for any sort of large scale events really do create constraints on staff. And as a result, of course, they do make things much more rigid. And that, as a result, has impacts on the health and safety of the workers. We all know from trying to make sure that our own work is completed to as high a standard as possible, that developing something to a very high standard exacts its toll on people. And of course, developing a very large scale event that runs for quite a long time does end up taking a health and safety toll on people. Needless to say, there are also problems connected to the host state. And again, these problems connect to the idea about perception that I mentioned before. So in terms of the United Arab Emirates, in the case of Expo 2020, there were all sorts of criticisms of the ways in which the UAE has been making use of workers over time. There were all sorts of criticisms, in fact, of all of the previous uh, hosts of Expo, the host states of Expos over the years. No host state is immune to uh, criticism about the ways in which it has been doing things and it continues to do things at the time of the Expo. And finally, of course, there are sustainability concerns. We live in a time of mounting concern about global environmental change and the ways in which these large-scale events have been taking place to date well, they probably won't be able to continue to take place in the same ways in the coming years. So, of course, Expo 2020 was criticised for the unsustainability of different aspects of the large event itself, as well as the sub-events, and those sustainability concerns will, I'm sure, continue to travel into future Expos as well. Just a little note as I head towards the finishing line that in case anyone is interested, we've also developed a little bit of related research about the online pre-events that took place around the expo. And we looked at those pre-events very much in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic again and the ways in which those pre-events were able to uh, draw individuals together and the issues connected to those pre-events. And the events within events aspect of the research is something that we're continuing to develop in other uh, places too. So with that, I thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you these insights, this research that we completed for the book. And again, I extend my congratulations to all of the other authors and particularly again to you, Naren, Handley, Lillian, and to uh, Gary, thank you very much.